So my name is Pierre Comizzoli and I am a research biologist at the Smithsonian Conservation Biology Institute in Washington, D.C. So I mainly work on reproductive uh, biology in different species, especially in carnivores, and trying to understand the basic traits of reproduction in different species, and then after that developing uh, new treatments or tools using assisted reproductive techniques associated with genome resource banking, which is freezing sperm, eggs or embryos of those species for a better genetic management. So here in the lab, um, we obviously do not work every day on exotic species. We have an experimental model and our main experimental model here are the domestic cat. Uh, is the domestic cat because we get from the um, spay clinics and animal rescue from the DC area, we get some cat ovaries. Another part of things that we are doing here is trying to understand how those cells that we are getting from females or the eggs or the sperm, we can keep them, we can suspend life and use them whenever we want because that's also something extremely important for us is that of time because sometimes we can have you know access to the sperm of a really valuable male but you don't have the eggs immediately to, 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 to use and to make an embryo so you gonna have to store the sperm in, uh, in liquid nitrogen so it's really to stop any kind of biological activity so usually the sperm is diluted in this mixture that provides you know everything that's going to be um, uh, positive for the survival of the sperm in, in the liquid nitrogen. So usually this, the, the, the straw is, is filled and then after that we have to, um, to close you know, the end of the sperm and then after that it's ready for freezing and ready for storing. For the eggs, that's the same. The difference is that sperm, we, we get millions or billions of sperm from one ejaculate on the male. But eggs, it's always you know, 10 to 15 eggs that we can get from a female. In terms of genetic management, it's really uh, bad because that means that you had only a few number of individuals in captivity that produced a lot of offspring and a lot of other individuals that were not necessarily compatible, well, they had still a really uh, high genetic value, but they were never involved in, you know, they were never producing any offspring. So you have this kind of a genetic drift where you have, you know, this, and you start to have the problem of breeding and stuff like that. So it was, you know, it was like that. I mean, as long as, you know, the animals were uh, producing babies, nobody uh, cared. But then, uh, you know, it's it, uh, lots of prime in breeding starting to to appear, and uh, and then also management of captive population started to be a little bit more uh, intelligent. So we started to realize, yeah, but we need to make sure that you know we preserve also genetic diversity in those populations. So that's why. Wow. But you know, it was in some cases like even the cladded leopard. I mean, we are. In a situation now, it's a really poor situation because the captive population is in really bad shape in terms of genetic diversity and it's going to be extremely difficult to reproduce those animals and to, again, reverse you know, the really negative effect, impact of this uh, inbreeding. Even if we can, under, with the domestic cat, we can understand you know, basic traits. After that, uh, it's not necessary. Whatever we, we we find or we improve in terms of the techniques or the tools that we can develop in the domestic cat, it's not going to be directly uh, applicable to all the different things. Because, for example, you have a, a, a huge difference in physiology between cheetahs and cladded leopards. The big difference is that cheetahs. The ovulation is triggered by the, the natural mating, so they are called, you know, induced ovulators because the egg is going to be ovulated uh, by the ovary as long as there is a vaginal stimulation 
from the, the natural mate. And if there is no uh, vaginal stimulation, there will be no ovulation of the egg. So you need to take that into account whenever also you, you manage your, your, your animals in captivity or even when you want to set up you know, in vitro techniques. In comparison, the clouded leopard is a spontaneous ovulator. Another part of the study is that's uh, really important. All the endocrinology of the, 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 the females and also for the males are extremely important. And on the top of that, uh, we have to deal with the seasonality of the reproduction because you have a lot of animals that are not necessarily ready to breed all, all year round. 